Imagine waking up tomorrow and noticing something is different. Your clothes feel looser and you feel a little more energized. You go into the kitchen and you're unusually craving healthy foods. You find yourself reaching for that healthy breakfast that you made the night before and not because you have to, but because you want to. An hour or two later, you're excited to get out the door and go for a run. And this is not just one day. This is every day. For some people, this is reality. Healthy choices are second nature, but it likely wasn't always that way. If we haven't met before, I'm Maria, and I'm a registered dietitian who has helped hundreds of people successfully lose weight. But believe it or not, there was a day where I really struggled with healthy eating too. And the thing is that you can know everything there is to know about weight loss, but if you don't put it into action, you will never have results. And in a world where we have more information than ever, Weight loss is not a knowledge problem. It's an execution problem. So in today's video, I'm going to share five mindset shifts that have helped many of my clients and myself finally make healthy eating a part of daily life, hoping to inspire you along the way too. Now, if you want something that you have never had, you must be willing to do something you have never done. And changing our routines and our habits is hard. There is no way to sugarcoat this. But remembering that it does get easier can really help in terms of being able to keep going. And it's often the first push or the first time that you make a change that you're met with the most resistance. But this is where you need to push through. If you're always offered free muffins in work, for example, the first time you say no, it's not easy, but the second time it gets that little bit easier and you'll have more confidence because you know you'll have done it once before. And recently, my fiance and I had gotten into a bit of a rut, where most evenings we found ourselves sitting on the couch, mindlessly snacking and watching Love is Blind. But then we decided that it is nine months until our wedding, so we need to stop doing this. And the first night that we sat on the couch without these snacks, it was really hard. But by the third evening, it was starting to get a little bit easier and it was becoming more of our new norm. But there was also the confidence there that we had known we had done it already for two nights in a row so that we had it in us and we could do it again. So it really is often that first big push where you put them back into the cupboard out of sight. That can be the hardest. But once you have this done, it then becomes some bit easier. Now, setting implementation intentions is another useful strategy that I like to use with my clients. Basically, when you are in your most focused, goal-driven state, you make a plan. For example, Sunday evening, where you're hopefully relaxed and you're well-fed. You're gonna sit down and plan out what you're going to eat the next day. Now, you're very good-intentioned and ambitious because you haven't yet woken up on Monday morning hungry or stressed because there's loads of emails in your inbox. So you're making this plan in advance of how you're going to handle your day. And this is what the calm and collected version of you who wants to get fitter or healthier intends to do. So then the next day when you're maybe stressed or hungry and tired, and you need to make a decision about what you're going to have for lunch, the stressed version of you is going to want something that is quick, easy in the moment, and then probably not very nutritious. But if you think back to what the rational long-term focused version of you planned out the night before. And this makes making the decision that little bit easier. And you will thank yourself in the end for sticking with your initial choices. Now, a slightly similar technique is to always have some if then plans. And these can help stop us from getting carried away in the moment. My one is if I crave some chocolate, then I will check if I am physically hungry. And if I am, I'll first have a balanced meal to satisfy this. If I'm still hungry, I will then take a small portion. I won't eat it out of the full box or the full bag. And I will eat it mindfully without any distractions. So not whilst on my phone and not whilst in front of the TV. And I'll try and eat it outside or in another room and really enjoy it. And this just helps us create some space between our impulses and our cravings and it helps us avoid overeating. And it's little tricks like this that can be very helpful. 
Now, I also want you to choose your words wisely. Instead of thinking about dieting, I want you to think about food as a way of fueling your body. And instead of thinking that I have to exercise or that I can't eat that, switching to I choose to move my body and I choose nourishing foods. This simple language shift can transform your outlook, making healthy eating and healthy choices seem empowering and much less like a chore. And it will help you build sustainable lifelong habits. Think about choosing nutrient dense foods that nourish you and give you energy. Because there is a lot of talk these days about self-care. We're encouraged to take breaks and to get our nails done. But self-care does not need to be these material things. Self-care can be as simple as choosing to prioritize making healthy meals. And healthy eating really can taste amazing. It might just need a little bit of practice. If you're looking for healthy high protein recipes, make sure to follow me over on Instagram. I try to keep my recipes simple. But dieting, it's such a negative word and it often makes us feel like we're missing out. So instead, focus on addition. Switch your focus to trying to eat seven servings of fruit and veg every day. Trying to eat more fiber, eat enough protein drinking enough water. And this will often naturally replace a lot of the less nutritious foods in our diet. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. Next, I want you to be fully present in the moment. And I'm not talking about mindful eating or stress management here, but it's the day-to-day -day choices that we make in the moment that are the most important. And when it comes to healthy eating, many of us are great at planning out all of these big changes that we're going to make. This four week plan that we're going to be starting or this new program on Monday. And it's great that we are planning and hoping to do all of these things, but just doing this can make us feel like we have already had some success, even though we haven't really done anything yet. And it's very easy to fall into this trap where you're going to do this and you're going to do that, but it never really translates. And it's the daily choices that we make right now in the present that will translate into greatness because it's making good choices, even if they're small, but consistently over time, that is the key to success. And the difference between greatness and mediocrity on a daily basis is very, very small. It might be as something as doing those few extra steps or watching your portion sizes at one meal. But in the long run, this can all become very significant. However, many people spread their attention too thin and in the process, they become stressed, frustrated and burnt out. And it's very easy to get caught up in what worked for you in the past and thinking about what you're going to do in the future. But being fully present in the moment is key and making those critical in the moment choices. Now, hopefully this video has been helpful. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button. It really helps support my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you will also enjoy the seven essential habits of people who lose weight and keep it off. So give that one a go next. And as a thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video, I have a free recipe ebook, which I've linked in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.